I mentally was like, I'm out of here, but really having the support system to get clear one step at a time. And one thing I did is I never looked and, and you and I've talked about this, but I never really looked 10 years out. I would look 12 months out. I would look six oh. months out because I think we get okay. really overwhelmed. Oh yeah. And we're like, oh, what are the next 25 decisions going to be to get me to the next 55 or 65? Stop. Just take it. And COVID certainly smacked me in the face and said, just, just take this nine to 12 months at a time. This is Diane Gilman, better known as the Queen of Jeans to a lot of you from 30 years on HSN QVC. Today, we have a fascinating subject. Wall Street to wellness, huh? Do you feel stuck? Do you feel like you're in a midlife crisis? Your soul is not getting nurtured. You don't know a way out. And maybe you just believe this is the only way. Oh no, we've got solutions that truly work and will inspire you with my guest, Lynn Mull, who went from Wall Street to wellness. Lynn, tell us your story because it's fascinating to me and it's so parallel in a way to mine, even though my story is honestly a fashion story, a fashionista story. So do tell how you went from being a top performer on Wall Street to doing reggae. I just, uh, 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 and I had a Reiki session with Lynn yesterday, and it was like, for me, taking a window with a lot of dust and a lot of dirt on it and washing it clean. Everything looks so much brighter, so much more optimistic. Mm. I feel like like you polished my soul or something. So anyway, yeah. go for it. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you for having me. Well, it's such an honor to be here. And yes, I did move in mid, you know, sort of midlife. I moved from a career on Wall Street to a full time wellness role because that's wow. where what I love to do. And I did it. I, I, did, I took the jobs. I was on airplanes. I was able to move from the West Coast to the East Coast. I did the big city roles. I did post-merger integration. And I was continually tapped for different jobs at the bank throughout my career. So I had a 25-year career in financial services. And from the outside, my resume still looks pretty darn good, right? Yeah. I've got all yeah. the boxes checked. I was able to move year over year, different titles, different roles, bigger teams, and for all intents and purposes, that safe role. I was, I had the benefits, the 401k, which is all amazing. And I'm so glad I did it. I do want to say that my career on wall street taught me so many things about resiliency and we can get into more of that later, but about, um, I would say about 10 years ago, I started to notice at a certain level, at an executive level in any division of the bank I was working at, just noticing people around me, um, frankly, getting sick. So I took note of that. And then I was passed up for a couple of jobs because I wasn't perfect. Or I had a boss who did not appreciate my ideas or who took advantage of my process improvements and would claim them to be theirs. And so this pattern continued, but still forcing me to work at the level and the hours and all of that. So over time, I started to explore what did I really want to do? I, like yeah. I said, I had checked all those boxes. The ladder was ahead of me, but the rungs on the ladder started to get really creaky and I had a couple of life moments that woke me up personally and right around me in my inner circle. And I started to explore things like, I love people. I love mentoring. So start to take those coaching classes. Then I kept going deeper and deeper and deeper into finding clarity for myself. And that led me on this windy path to coaching, to yoga, to breath work, but then ultimately to be a Reiki master and and an author of an Oracle deck. And, and I believe that if you find clarity, 
you can find your own pathway. Totally. And, you know, for me, I think that I was like, uh, like I, uh, I had Munhauchen's, Munhauchen's syndrome. I was miserable. I was in a position where I was number one. I remember my mother being in an unhappy marriage. She stayed in forever. And I asked her one day when she was quite up there age wise, about 94, I said, basically, why, why did you stay? And she said, what was I going to do? My family, I had no education, no job training in the 1950s and 60s as a woman and onward. I had a big home in Southern California with a swimming pool while my family were all mostly day laborers in fish factories in uh, Northern Maine. I had a Cadillac bought for me every year. I had mink coats in the closet. Who was going to sympathize with me? So, you know, for me, I wondered if I chose the business partners I did who were really toxic and I stayed in a super toxic relationship in business because I thought that was all there was for me. And I was stuck. And I'll tell you how stuck I was, Lynn. When I finally realized that all the financials were super wrong and I needed legal guidance, I explained my situation to my lawyers. I had two head lawyers, um, two chief counsel, and one of them said to me, Diane, what year is it? And I said, uh, it's 2000. 20, 21. And he said, yeah. And slavery ended in 1865. And they so dealt egregious. into it and they kept asking me, do, are you ready to jump? Will, can we go to the limits in defending you based on the fact that you may lose your partnership here. And I said, do it, do it. I, and you know, people tell me today, you look totally different. Your face used to be so tense. You look different. You carry yourself differently. So you went from Wall Street, which was rather toxic for you, to wellness. Was it scary to you to make that leap? It sounds to me like it was done in increments where I just, I had no choice. I had to go off the high diving board and that was it. And you know, sometimes those leaps are really important. Sometimes people take the leaps because you, ch you had a choice in a lot of ways. You let them go to those limits. You had the support. Sometimes it's a layoff. Scary. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes people are forced to move, right, with a spouse, and they're like, oh, we have to relocate for family. And so you sort of get that severing impact. Yeah. And I really took a concerted effort to step into it. A leap was not an option for me financially at the time. Like 10 years ago, I was not, I mentally was like, I'm out of here. But really having the support system to get clear one step at a time. And one thing I did is I never looked and, and you and I've talked about this, but I never really looked 10 years out. I would look 12 months out. I would look six oh. months out because I think we get okay. really overwhelmed. Oh yeah. And we're like, Oh, what are the next 25 decisions going to be to get me to the next 55 or 65? Stop. Just take it. And COVID certainly smacked me in the face and said, just, just take this nine to 12 months at a time. And that really helped me like wow. hit the next milestone. I never thought about that. Certainly in my age, and I'm in a couple of weeks going to be 78. I wasn't looking, I, I was in a way looking 10 years out because I had a friend, Iris Appel, who's now 103 and became a total accidental social media icon at the age of about 90. She became a complete star. And so I thought, okay, there's definitely room. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I can barely operate my iPhone, but I think I've got the communication skills and I want to try podcasting because I think I can transfer 
some of my talent. But for you, being on Wall Street as a financial guru, female, I don't see how you, what, what did you have in your mind that you could, I could say, okay, I've been in front of a TV camera for 30 years. I can transfer that joy, the experience of communication to a podcast. But I don't see what you packaged and walked with you to the next steps in your life, which are all about spiritual wellness. How'd you do that? And did you think about it that way? I do, no, I didn't think about it. I have ah. two things. I have two things behind me is, um, and you know, we could talk about all the projects I was on and all the organization and all of that, but really I have drive just like you. I love working. I love impacting, love, love, love. working. I love that my daughter see me working and ah. I believe I do have a really long career and Yay. I also want to contribute to my family overall. That being said, so I knew I could do it. I have the gumption is one thing, but my other secret sauce is some, what some people call like a dirty word. I love to network and all networking is, is relationships. I have kept a strong thread. So my thread maybe isn't that I now am doing the spiritual work However, it is the relationships I build. I can hold space for people. And I love having these collection of friends and relationships from all areas of my life. And some of my clients are coming to me for career coaching to do this pivoting work. We add in the breath work. We add in the Reiki. One of my current clients I haven't talked to in 25 years, but we work together and she trusts me. So keeping that thread of and not being afraid to ask. So if anyone's out there and like, I don't even know how to get going. Hey, I need some advice or, Hey, can you have coffee with me? Can we have that, that connection? You knew me when, when I was really good at this. And I really believe those people and those relationships have, have carried me to this next career. You know, it's so funny, but one thing that was really great for me about 30 years on teleretail was unlike regular brick and mortar. It was, and I did invent a middle-aged gene. So of course I was listening and sensitive Mm. to my customer. And then we became this kind of consortium of women. And it was at one point 700,000 women based fan club. Um, I learned that people are looking for solutions. And if you're somebody lucky enough to have forward vision, which not everybody does, and I don't all the time either, you know, you get lost in the Mm. day-to-day drama, um, then you should, and I always felt with my talent, you should guide your talent and use it for good. So that made me very excited about becoming not even an influencer, but a a spokesperson. And, you know, a lot of people said to me, oh, why don't you just retire and kick back? Well, obviously that is not my personality. Then I hear all the time, you should be on a cruise. I would shoot myself first. I'm a Leo, I'm a fire sign. I don't like water, okay? Don't like water. So um, I had to go against most of what people formed an opinion about me on. And I just said, you know what? I am miserable where I am. You know, I was in a position, and we talked about this, where the, the whole aura of where I was was so specifically ego-driven that if you had a good idea, a really good idea, and you expressed it, you were going to get punished for it because that meant that you might look smarter than management. Yep, keep you so down. crush it, crush it. Even if their box of understanding was that big and yours was a hundred times bigger, 
They didn't want to know about it because it, or unless you could tell them in private and then let them steal it from you. Steal and the idea. It as their idea. But that was all too convoluted for me. I will tell you one thing, though. When we talk about Wall Street to wellness, or from from my point of view, it was corporate layers to personal expression and freedom. Authenticity. I, authenticity, which was so important to me in how I expressed myself on television about my product, which I loved. Um, I would never go back into a layered situation like that because somebody like me, unlike you, I don't understand numbers that well. I understand how to make everybody around me money, but I don't understand the money part of it myself. I couldn't be a CFO of my own corporation. And that always put me at such a disadvantage mm -hmm. so that the suits could come in and control me financially and keep me always paddling. I was always dog paddling, even though I was by far number one in fashion on teller retail. I never felt as good as. Yeah. So what would your advice be to anybody who like you or me was in a position where we knew we were good? We knew we were competent. We did get the opportunities, but somehow we never quite got rewarded for them the way we should. And um, I don't know if for you it was a, a male thing, but when I think about Wall Street, I feel like it is so male dominated. Am I correct there or no? Yes, and even the women were acted like men. I, you know, the same thing you started off saying, people told me I looked different when I left. It took about six oh, no. months. Really? I said, that's the best compliment I've ever gotten. They said, your face wow. is different. Yes. And I said, yes, I'm released from the bure bureaucracy of it and the ability to have a conversation through authentic ways. And I had hoped that through COVID, there would be some release of some of that male energy in general, that very masculine, you're only as good as your last email. Think literally, like a man, right? Think like a think man. Think like a man. Pretend, Absolutely. pretend you don't have this outside world, even though you know we had the dogs barking and and things like that. Now, I will say there are a ton of people in my life who I'm still connected to who supported me in the back end, who were really helpful. We all had those people yeah. from within who weren't toxic, but. I think what I love about your story and you have a beginner's mind and you're like, you know what? I still want to do this. I don't know how this podcasting is going to go, but I'm going to try it. Okay. So I want to tell the audience, this is a segue into the, how did the podcasting go? Five weeks after I walked away from a 30 year career having developed a hundred million dollar a year retail business. So amazing. Five weeks after, and I was thinking, oh no, I'm just going to disappear. No one's going to know me. No one's going to remember me. I don't know. What am I doing? Um, I was offered my own weekly podcast as a co-host. And I did that for 13 weeks, 14 weeks. And then... I said, you know what? This is not fair. It's a male co-host. He's gonna, he's just getting trampled by me because I always want to talk about women's subjects. So everyone said, okay, Diane, try it yourself. I said, you know, I've honestly never been on air alone. I always had hosts on TV. So anyway, I did it. And ladies and gentlemen, drum roll this week on YouTube. They named the 80 most influential podcasts for women over 50. And we came in at number 27. And we've only been doing this for four and a half months. And I mm -hmm. want to thank everybody for their belief and their enjoyment and their support. It couldn't mean more to me. My heart is just 
bursting. I'm so proud. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. I'm tagging on to subjects that are meaningful. But you know what? If if you, Lynn, had to say, what was your seminal moment when you said to yourself, I did the right thing? What would it be from going from Wall Street to wellness? Was there one moment, maybe you were working with someone and they had an epiphany. Um, maybe you clarified someone's life uh, through Reiki the way you really clarified me yesterday. What would be that one moment where you said, yep, I did the right thing. I left corporate America for something deeply personal and it truly resonates and makes a difference. Yeah. You know, it's a very hard question to think of one. So I can narrow it to two. One was when I hosted my first retreat. I did a 24 hour retreat and one of my friends who's been a supporter the whole time, not only watching me, but, you know, referring friends to me for whether it's Reiki or coaching. And she looked at me and she said, only you would do this at the level. Only you would host a retreat at this level. She goes, everything you do, you research it. And she looked at me in the eye and I just felt totally seen, Diane. I just wow. was like, totally seen. Oh, I love that. I, I just, that. you know, you work so hard on these things and you really want it to be good, right? You want your, this podcast to be amazing. And then to get yeah. these, re, you know, yes. Do you need the reward to be 27th? No, but it just validates that the topics you're picking, the guests, the way you and the team have done the research. And it's just so great to feel like, you know what I am? doing this wellness thing at an amazing level where women feel supported. And I do have, you know, sometimes you don't know because in corporate America, you'd get your hand slapped or you'd get the good job. You would have the sort of like in school, the A's, the B's, the C's, did I get the F? Did I get the A? And out here, yeah. there's not a, so many grades. Um, <laughs> and then the second thing I do want to say is I created this Oracle deck, the 24 Oracle deck, and I'm in my second printing. Oh my I'm like, God. holy cow, I got to hit buy more with my, my team, my, my design team who helped me bring it to fruition. And to think that, you know, a thousand people have my deck. It, it's amazing. The impact it's like, oh, I'm doing this. I had the, oh, I'm still here moment. I, I feel this is the age of individual entrepreneurs. I feel that there are so many things failing in these giant corporations in America. And in fact, in our government, it only took me four years to get Medicare. That is a saga that's unbelievable. And, and it just, it's to me, the government is just a giant sized corporation totally yes. out of control. But, um, you know, I also had to stay in my company as part of my sign off for X amount, a couple of right. years. And it didn't matter how I performed. I set all time teller retailing records that no one's come close to breaking. I never got a thank you. I never got a good job done. I never got a let's collaborate. Uh, I was kept in a dark silo with no praise, no recognition, no reward. And it was so um, it was like, truthfully, the Wizard of Oz. It was like opening up that door and it was, suddenly it was munchkin land. My life was in color. Oh yes. my God, people actually said to me, well, I love your podcast or why don't you do this or let me be on and we'll talk about. I had been so alone and so silenced. Yeah. Same. Because I was outstanding, but the management team was not necessarily, and they resented that. And I think when you get into corporate America and you're in your fifties, especially as a female, don't expect big raises. Don't expect praise. Don't expect a, a new title that's way up in the stratosphere because you are not necessarily appreciated. And the one thing I always say to people, Lynn, and I wonder if you agree, if you are 
out of it. Let's say you left because of illness, the way I left for almost, I had to step back for a year to get chemo and, and radiation stuff. Um, do you really want to step back into that again, into a place where just because of a couple of numbers like 50 or 55 or 60, you are no longer appreciated and they really want you to step aside and make way. Even when I left where I was, I always loved my female community. My, my base right. of customers were about 65 years old. And my understanding, although I did not attend the meeting, was that the first thing said when I left was, thank God that old lady's gone and we want 30-year-old customers now. So, you know, I, I would say that one of the things that really pivoted me was I knew no matter how much experience I had, how much drive I had, how much passion I had for designing fashion, I was a dinosaur. I was beyond a dinosaur. I, I, I mean, I was extinct. I was, what are you doing here? Everybody else has died or walked away. And I realized if I was going to do something meaningful for my female sisterhood, I was going to have to do it alone. And that was a little bit scary. So, you know, We've had almost the entire time fly by now. And I have to ask you, do you feel more connected to your female audience than your male? Is it, is energy all the same for you? And then I will ask you after this, I'm going to ask you one final question about advice. Yeah. So Whether you're, you know, in a great divorce and you're thinking, life sucks and it's never going to get better or for me leaving my whole profession behind because I had to sign off was like a great divorce what would you say to people thinking I don't like my life but I don't see a way out that's a big question it is a big question yeah. leaving on a bang just like I knew you would well I think <laughs> I think that, you know, I, I work with men and women, but I do think that there's a, a sisterhood and solitude, a, a solidarity in moving forward as we go through these different phases, whether it's a physical phase, an age phase, a life phase, right? And women, we hold things differently. We experience things, whether it's our physicality and our hormone changing, or it's our energy as people leave the nest or we go into these different acts in our lives, I do think it's so important. And I do find that the impact I have on my female audience is um, they really accept it in Reiki and then they take it on. They take it ah, forward. Okay. Okay. And you it's know, very lasting. When, I, when I started to form this podcast and I realized that I wasn't doing my male co-host it wasn't, I wasn't really going into a great partnership there because most of the subjects I wanted to talk about were female oriented. I realized I only wanted to hire females. I wanted to, I wanted to have that female energy all around me and I wanted to honor them and I wanted mm -hmm. to give them a chance for a really high level of uh, action and self-respect and that has that mm -hmm. has only amplified with time from doing this so um, maybe that is the circle of energy we we got to talk about yesterday i i think yeah the huh, advice that's is so interesting okay i think yeah. the advice i would give is you want to get to clarity and clarity could be for the next week it could yeah. be for the next month or the next year Finding a way to get clear. You can get help through a coach, through different healers. Life through, coach. You, yeah, you can really work. I think doing it alone is hard. Yeah. And I think doing it or having these conversations of clarity with your inner circle, your your true family, it gets a little close. And they've probably been hearing about the bad divorce, the bad job, the bad relationship. They've probably been hearing about it for quite some time. So I do recommend getting 
some sort of third party help because we can't do it alone. And then my other advice is lean into your experience. So if the corporate gurus don't love our gray hair, if they don't love the, our experience, you still have that experience. If they're intimidated by it, forget it. What can you do that you know really well? So I'm great at organizing stuff. So I leaned into the retreat as one of my first offerings because ah. I used to do that at corporate. And you know what? I'm great at that. So I keep leaning into that experience as I have that growth mindset. And then I got clear, I want to do another retreat. And that's one example, but the same thing for you. I tested the podcast, leaned into my my telepresence, my interview skills. And then you know what? It, I got a shift, but you still kept that thread of experience throughout. And I think sometimes as women, especially we, we discount our experiences. We discount totally. our, our DNA and we got to lean and into it. One thing, and I'm not even going to say it's DNA, but I, to tell you the truth, the last few days I've been walking around saying, I, I don't know. Are we growing fast enough? Is anybody really listening? I don't know. Maybe I'm not doing this podcast correctly. I go through a lot of self-doubt when there isn't a lot of noise and accolades Same. and stuff. You know, your mind starts to drift. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. The universe always speaks. And here I am. And just when I was into a self-doubt phase, I find out that I'm on the top 80 podcasts over 50 women's um, hosts. And that, to me, was a clear message. Thanks. Diane, you made the right decision, even Thanks. though it was Thanks. scary. Diane, keep going. I feel a lot, Lynn, like I'm in the middle of the Amazon and all I've got is a giant machete and I'm hacking my trail as I go. I'm right there with but you. At least it's my trail, right? And yeah, so you know how it feels. No one has really told you how to do this. You've got an inner voice. You have to quiet yourself down, which I think Reiki was beautiful at doing that. And then you've got to listen to what the universe, the universe will always tell you, always. But you've got to recognize it. You've got to be mm -hmm. able to open up your inner self and see it and feel it. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Well, and, you know, I had the doubts too. And then I was a part of a, a, I was leading some wellness workshops. And then I got your email to, to join this podcast. So same yeah. thing. It's like, keep going, keep helping support. And those doubts are also normal. Even Oprah said she had those doubts when she had many, many guests on her couch. So just know that that's there and that'll come and you might feel like you're getting tested by the universe. But then if you really quiet, like you said, and get so clear, and as soon as you can get clear and articulate it, literally the opportunities start to magnetize towards you. You got super clear. Women are my audience. This is what I want to talk about. These are my topics. And then people were like, yeah, I'll be on. Let's talk about it. Same idea for me. It's like, I want to keep supporting women. I love facilitating. Then those opportunities keep coming. Or if someone's really interested in how to bring other groups together, or they want a different job in the same vein, you just, as soon as you get clear, those opportunities pop up. So I, I love leaning into both your inner self and then also taking a little bit of that leap of faith. Like we talked about in the beginning, like knowing the universe will support you when you get clear. You know, it's funny, but I remember um, at one point in the partnership I had sitting outside, I've got a garden, and weeping. I was literally hysterical. I was weeping. And I said, why? Why did I attract this toxicity to me and this terrible, de 